In this video, I'll show you how to create a repeating group with images that overlap with each other. This is a pretty popular design style when you're displaying a series of user profile photos. Now look, thankfully, this one is pretty straightforward. So let's just grab our bubble editor and we can dive right into it. Before we jump into the process of setting up and configuring our repeating group, I just wanna show you a quick example of exactly what we're gonna be building today. And look, as you can see, when it comes to our entire tutorial, this is going to be pretty straightforward. I think this is probably gonna be one of the shortest tutorials I've ever created. And that's because we are essentially just designing a repeating group. It's not rocket science. But over in a preview of an app that I've already created, you can see that this is just like a home page or a landing page for a SaaS application, which is called my incredible SaaS. And if I scroll on down, you can see that my incredible SaaS is trusted by these incredible people. And of course, these incredible people came from no other place than a stock image website. But look, the point that I wanna get at right now is as you can see, all of these images overlap with each other. So it creates that nice experience that we're looking for today. But that begs the question, how on earth can we design this? Let's jump over into a bubble editor that I've already created. So this is how that landing page is structured inside of bubble. And as you can see, I've got my repeating group here, but what I'm gonna do instead of actually just showing you how I've set this up, I wanna rebuild this from scratch so you can follow along with the exact step-by-step -step instructions. So the first thing we need to do is obviously add a repeating group onto our page. So if I scroll on down to my containers menu, I'm gonna grab a repeating group. I'm just gonna add it kind of at the top here. And like every repeating group, the first thing you need to do is give this a data source because of course we need to determine which data we want to display. Now in my example today, I'm just going to be displaying a list of users in my database. So if I open up my data tab here, I just have one data type, which is my user. And of course the important data field that's gonna power this experience is the profile photo, which is an image. But look, in your application, you might not wanna show user profile photos. Instead, you might wanna show things like company logos, and that might be linked to a separate data type, but all you need is to know which data type has the image or the logo that you wanna display. So I'm just gonna jump back to my design tab. And for the type of content, I'm just gonna set this to be a user. And for the data source, I'm just gonna perform a search for all of the users in my database. I don't need to add any constraints. It's honestly gonna be pretty straightforward. So I'm then gonna to choose to close this. Now the second most important thing you need to factor in when it comes to building out this experience or where the profile photos overlap is that you need your repeating group to be a horizontal scrolling repeating group not a standard repeating group. And so a horizontal repeating group, as the name suggests, allows you to display elements horizontally across your page. But how can we get to that point? What you need to do is uncheck both of these options here, which fix the number of rows and the number of columns. Then you'll see this drop down menu, which allows you to update the scroll direction. And from this, we're gonna select the horizontal choice. And so that is all we need to change because what we now need to focus on is building out the profile photo that's gonna sit inside of each repeating group cell. So we're just gonna scroll on up to our visual elements, grab an image here and add this into the very first cell of my repeating group. And I can see for some reason that's not actually inside my repeating group, it's sitting above it. So I'm just gonna try again here. I'm gonna grab an image, add it into my repeating group. And a way to tell if your image does sit within your repeating group is when you insert dynamic data, you should see the option known as the current cell, which I do. So right now that image is within the very first cell of my repeating group. So today I'm just gonna reference the data of the current cells user, and I'm gonna reference their profile photo, as I just mentioned. Now, when I'm working with dynamic images, I personally just like to select this option to process an image with Imgix. And the reason I do this is because I like to select this choice to resize and fit the dimensions by cropping them. And so what this just means is that if an image is too small, it's going to span it out and crop it to make sure it takes up the entire space that we've allocated. Because in your app, although you're allowing users to upload profile photos, no two profile photos will be the same. Users might upload a large scale image or a smaller image. And so we just need to create some sort of consistency between all of these. So that's why I personally like to select this option. We can then choose to close that. That's all we need to change for the dynamic image source but now we need to make sure that these images will become a circle. So I'm gonna scroll on down. And for the sake of my tutorial today, I'm just gonna add a solid border around my image for the time being, just so that way I can actually see where each circle sits inside of my repeating group. 
When you go to preview or publish your app though, of course you can update this to be none. So that way you don't see that black line around the image. But for the sake of making our tutorial easier to follow, let's just keep it as a solid border. I'm also then gonna set the roundness of my borders to be 100. So that way they become a perfect circle. And then I'm gonna jump over to my layout tab here. And this is where I can determine the size of my image. So right now this image is fixed at 320 pixels. And it being a fixed value means that it will never increase or decrease in size. It's always going to be this exact same size you see here. Now, while I do want my image to be a fixed width, so I only ever want it to be one exact size, 320 pixels is quite large. So I'm personally gonna set this to be 60 pixels. And while I'm here, what I'm gonna do is tick this option to keep this elements aspect ratio fixed, and I'm gonna leave it at a one-to-one -one ratio. So now my image will be a perfect square or a perfect circle. So it's 60 pixels by 60 pixels. I'm then going to horizontally align this in the center of my repeating group cell and just add in 10 pixels of margin at the top and 10 on the bottom. But I'm not gonna add any on the left or the right just yet. We will come back later on and do that, but for now, we're gonna leave that as is. So that's how we can add the image inside of our repeating group. But from here on my original checklist, what you'll see is that after adding in the profile photo, we need to adjust the repeating group dimensions so it kind of collapses and fits around that profile photo. So let's jump into Bubble here. And if we select on the overall repeating group, so in this case, it's my repeating group user. What I'm now gonna do is set the width of this to be zero. So that way it can shrink down to the smallest possible size. But when it comes to the height, I also need to update this. So right now the minimum height is 232 pixels which is this exact height you see here. And look, this height is too much. I only want to display one line of profile images. I don't want to display four. So what I need to do is make this height here the exact value that I need to factor in for one profile photo. But how can I find out the exact perfect size? Thankfully, because my image is a fixed width and the aspect ratio is one to one, that means that my height is also 60 pixels. And because it's fixed, it will always be 60 pixels. It's never going to change in height. And I also can see that I have 10 pixels of margin at the top and 10 on the bottom. So 60 plus 10 plus 10 is 80 pixels. So if I select on my repeating group, I'm gonna set the minimum height here to be 80 pixels. But I'm also gonna tick this option to keep this a fixed height, which just means that the height of my repeating group will never expand as well. It will always be this exact same height you see here. And so that's how we can control the height of our repeating group. And you can really start to see it's coming together quite nicely now. But right now we have all of this empty space between our images. Whereas we actually want our images to be touching and eventually we want them to overlay. So if we jump over to our appearance tab, we can also configure the dimensions for each repeating group cell inside of the overall repeating group. So when it comes to a repeating group, the dimensions within your layout tab determine the, I guess you could say, dimensions around the border of the element. So everything that's not inside of each repeating group cell. Whereas over in your appearance tab here, these dimensions determine the height and the width of each cell inside of your repeating group. And right now I can see that these have values inside of them. So for instance, the minimum height of each row is 56. Whereas in reality, I should set that to be 80 because 80 is of course the height we've set for the overall repeating group. So what I'm gonna do is set this to be 80, but because my minimum width is 100 pixels, I've got all of this empty space. So what I'm actually gonna do is not set this minimum width to be 60 pixels, which is the width of my image. Instead, I'm gonna set this to be zero pixels. So that just means that each cell will eventually be able to shrink down to the smallest possible size, which is zero pixels. And look, that's important because in a moment, we want to actually reduce our cells so they overlap with each other. And right now is the fun part because this is where we get to build that out. But before I do that, what I should do is quickly just run a preview of this and show you what this is going to look like. So over in a preview of my incredible SaaS app here, you can see that my repeating group is displaying a list of my most trusted users. But of course, this looks nothing like the repeating group that we want. We still want these images to overlap. So in order to do that, we need to select on the image here. And if we head over to our layout tab, under our margins, what we're gonna do is add a negative margin to the left-hand side here. So I'm personally gonna add a margin of negative 15. 
And what you'll now see is that these images are going to overlap with each other. So if I was to jump back into my preview and refresh this page, what you'll now notice is that all of these images overlap nicely. However, for our first image, we have a problem. And that is that our first image also has a negative margin of 15. So it's actually being cut off. But we just need to remember that when it comes to our first image, we don't need it to overlap with anything because it is the first image. So in order to combat that, what we can do is actually create a condition which just recognizes when the image is within the first cell of our repeating group, we should not add that margin. But all of the other images should have that negative margin. So in order to do that, let's jump back into Bubble. We're going to select on our image and we're going to head over to our conditional tab here. We're going to define a condition and we're going to recognize when the current cells index. Now, if you're not familiar with this term, this essentially just means the cell number within our repeating group. So if I look at all of these images here, I'm going to say there's probably 20 of them. Each image obviously sits in an individual cell inside of our repeating group. So this is image number one. This is image number two, image number three, and so on. So when it comes to our repeating group, this is cell number one, cell number two, cell number three, and also so on. Now that cell number is known as the cells index. So when the current cells index for this image is in fact, and I'm going to type in the number one, and then I'm going to click away. I'm not going to hit enter because if I hit enter, it's going to select this option here, which is a desktop breakpoint. I don't want that. I only want it to be the number one then I'm going to click away and you'll see that this will validate. What I'm then going to do is recognize when this condition is true, I'm going to update the left margin of our first image and I'm just going to set this to equal zero. And if I really wanted, I could choose to toggle this on and off to see what that's going to look like. And as you'll see, this is now creating the experience that we're looking for. So if I jump back into our preview and refresh the page, what you can now see is that we've created the perfect experience. But of course, these images are scaled across to the left-hand side of my page, whereas I want them in the middle so I can set it below my heading. So if we jump back into Bubble here, I'm going to select on the overall repeating group itself, head to my Layout tab, and at this point in time, I'm going to update the width settings for this repeating group. So right now, this repeating group has a minimum width of zero and a maximum width of infinite. And the maximum width is the problem here because by saying that this has an infinite maximum width, it's going to scale across the full width of my page and take up as much space as it can. Whereas I only want it to take up the space that's needed for my images. Now look, when it comes to determining the perfect width size for your repeating group here, in theory, what you could do is count how many profile photos you're displaying. And if we know that the width of each profile photo is 60 pixels, but then for every image that's past the first profile photo, it has a negative 15 margin. We then know that each cell is 45 pixels in width. So you could just count 60 plus 45 plus 45 plus 45, or you could do the lazy thing, which I'm going to do right now. And that is just make this a fixed width. And I'm going to totally guess a number here. I'm going to say something like 400 pixels, but then I'm going to horizontally align this in the center of my page. And if I run a preview of this, I can see that this is kind of close enough. We do have a little bit of empty space around our last image, but thankfully we could also remove the border of this repeating group so you won't even notice that. Let's jump back into Bubble here. I'm going to select on my repeating group and in my appearance tab, I'm just going to remove the line separator. I'm going to set this to be none. And then I'm also going to remove the border of my overall repeating group. So I'm going to set this to none. Then if I jump back to the preview and refresh the page, as you will see, that has been completely removed and we now have our perfect repeating group where all of our images overlap beautifully. That is all I wanted to cover within this tutorial today. If you found this video useful and you wanted to stay up to date with any additional bubble resources I share, I'd always recommend hitting that subscribe button on my channel so that way you can be the first to know whenever I drop a new tutorial. For now though, I just wanted to say a massive thank you for taking the time to watch this specific video and I wish you all of the best on your own no-code journey.